In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Today is Friday in the octave of Easter. And Friday, in some ways, is always Good Friday, even though it's Easter. And Sunday, in some ways, is always Easter Sunday. And so even though it's in Easter and we're celebrating the resurrection, let's take advantage of this Friday in Easter and let us look at how God has reconciled us to his Son through all the Paschal mysteries, through all the Triduum mysteries that we celebrated this last week, and to prepare our hearts to truly be reconciled, fully be reconciled to God and to one another, let us call to mind all those things that divide us. Let us call to mind all the ways we don't want to be reconciled. Let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who gave us the Paschal Mystery in the covenant you established for reconciling the human race, so dispose our minds, we pray, that what we celebrate by professing the faith, we may express in deeds through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After the crippled man had been cured, while Peter and John were still speaking to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple guard, and the Sadducees confronted them, disturbed that they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They laid hands on Peter and John and put them in custody until the next day, since it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word came to believe, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. On the next day, their leaders, elders, and scribes were assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly class. They brought them into their presence and questioned them, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, answered them, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today, about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and the people of Israel shall know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this, na this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which you are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love is everlasting. Hallelujah. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, 
Has become the cornerstone by the Lord. This is done. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love. Thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love is everlasting. And now let us prepare our hearts for the reading of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Lord, be in our minds and on our lips and in our hearts. Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. And other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards dragging the net with fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net to shore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Both the readings are uh, really powerful. One of the neat things about that phrase, there's no other name under heaven by which we can be saved. We think of it in religious terms, but it had a big meaning uh, in the time of the book of Acts. That was the inscription that was on the coin that bore Caesar's image. It said, there is no other name under heaven by which we can be saved, and it was Caesar that the coin 
pointed out. And so uh, Peter, in using this phrase, makes it clear, it's not Caesar who's going to save us, it's Jesus who's going to save us. I was looking on a high school friend's Facebook page, he's a minister uh, of some kind in, in the Protestant church, and he copied a, a quote, and it was really beautiful. One of the people said, uh, he, he just kind of asked that question, what's going on? He said, if you want to know, uh, just know that God is God, and there is no one other. And let's put our trust completely in God, so that we can live and not be afraid. We can live and not worry. I was on another page, uh, Jen Hamel's page, and, and she said, um, the quote on her page said, Fear does not keep us from dying, it keeps us from living. And she said, worrying doesn't make tomorrow better, it makes today miserable. And so there's no other name under heaven by which we can be saved. Today let us put all our trust in Jesus. Let's know that He is God and that He loves us and that we trust Him. And we don't know what will come of all this crisis, but we do know God has it in God's hands. And we don't have to worry or be afraid. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about was reconciliation. I mentioned it in my introductory remarks. And the introductory prayer also mentioned reconciliation. Jesus has given us this ministry of reconciliation. I'll challenge you all to take a look at 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 5, and then about chap, uh, verses 17 to 21, and just see how many times it says, be reconciled to God. And we've been given this ministry of reconciliation. If we've been given this ministry of reconciliation, then let's let our own hearts be reconciled to God for sure, but also to one another for sure because that's the new commandment, to love one another as I have loved you. That's what God wants, is us to be reconciled one to another. And finally, the last quote I noticed from Facebook today, it said something like this, I don't wanna go back to, the, uh, to normal, because these days we're all praying for one another. We're all going to daily mass. We're all worshiping together on Facebook, and we care about one another, and we're treating one another the way Christ has taught us to treat one another. Yeah, we tend to come together in crisis, and we don't want to live in crisis, but it has changed us. Let us let this good work transform us to where, when we are back to something close to normal, we can continue to pray, to do daily Mass, and to be truly uh, reconciled one to another, to be caring of one another because that's our faith, and what a wonderful faith we have. The intention of today's Mass is Jim Rothley. And now let us pray together. Loving Heavenly Father, we pray for our church. Uh, Lord, let this be a time of true transformation for your church. Let us never go back to the way things were, but let us be fully transformed through this process. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our world, that we too might come together more. We might care for one another as we're doing in this crisis, sharing with one another the needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we just pray for our heroes in this day, our doctors, our nurses, our health care providers, everyone who's on the front line. Uh, they are really... Uh, just out there and need your love, your protection, and we want to give them our love as well. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for uh, our parish. Let us truly grow in this time and, and be renewed and transformed. We pray to, to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who are sick or suffering. In any way, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who have died and that they might see the face of God this day. Especially, uh, we want to remember uh, Eleanor Appel 
Uh, we want to remember her family as they grieve, that the Holy Spirit might console them. Lord, uh, bring Eleanor into your glorious presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, and we pray for Jim Rothley, the intention of this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, and we pray for the unspoken prayers within every heart who is watching this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we bring all these prayers to you, our loving Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I'm thinking of so many names I saw today on Facebook and they were just asking for prayers and just want to remember all of them, uh, Teresa and uh, Krista and do you remember other names? Uh, uh, Diana, um, and Debbie, just, Debbie. Uh, let's just remember all those and offer all these people up in our prayers. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, we ask you to receive us, to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer in humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all his holy church. Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray, the solemn exchange brought about by these paschal sufferings, that we may be drawn from earthly desires to a longing for the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks and praise, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Earl, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be, peace be with you. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We say it for each other. was dead in the grave 
I was covered in sin and shame I heard mercy call my name He rolled the stone away Amen, amen I'm alive, I'm alive because he lives Amen Faithful Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.